Welcome to the sixth part of the tutorial series on how to make tic-tac-toe game in Unity. We need to test the grid spaces on the board and see if there has been a win. We don't have the player sides properly set up, but we will need to check the grid spaces text property to see if the string values match three in a row and that these values match the side that's currently playing. To do this we will need a variable to hold the character representing the current side that is actively playing. This variable will eventually change as we alternate turns, but for now it will be a constant value. We will need to set this value when the game starts and we will need to return this value in get player side rather than question mark. Open the game controller script for editing. Define a private string variable called player side. Private string player side. In awake, set player side to x. Player side equals x. In get player side, return player side rather than question mark. Return player side. This will now send the player side to grid space when it calls get player side, and this sets us up for sending the current player side when we alternate the sides. The next step is to check for a win. In end turn, remove the debug.log line. Debug.log, end turn is not implemented. To check for a win, we need to look at the three rows, the three columns and the two diagonals on our board to see if all three of the grid spaces in any series all match. This game is small enough to test the winning conditions using brute force. We can simply check a row, comparing the three spaces with the current player's value to see if all three spaces match the current player. This line of code will need to go into the end turn function, so when we call end turn, we check to see if the current player has won the game. This will be done by creating a rather complex if statement. We will be checking if button 0 equals player side and if button 1 equals player side and if button 2 equals player side. If all of these prove true, we have a win. Add code to check the first row to the function end turn. If button list 0 dot text equals equals player side and end button list 1 dot text equals equals player side and end button list 2 dot text equals equals player side in this line of code we are checking the top row to see if all three spaces match the current player this is why we need to know exactly which buttons are in what spaces we know that the grid spaces are in order left to right and top to bottom so by checking the text values from button list 0 button list 1 and button list 2 we will be checking the values for the top row. Now, if a row, column, or diagonal does test true for a win then we need to do a few things to end the game. In the very least we need to disable all of the buttons on the board so that the game cannot continue and not one can click any unused buttons. So, when the win conditions are met, let's call a function where we can do all of our game over logic. Add a function that returns void called game over. Void game over. The first action we would want to take when the game is over would be to turn off all of the unused buttons. To do this, we need to access each button. We can do this through our button list. There is no need to actually test each button to see if it is interactable or not. This is a waste of resources when running and time when coding. We can simply set all of the buttons to non-interactable by looping through all of the elements in our button list. If that button is already non-interactable due to a move already taken, it will stay non-interactable. The property will simply be set to the same non-interactable value. This is a little like running a hand down a row of switches and shutting them all off. Whether they were on or off to begin with is irrelevant. In the game over function, create a new for loop that iterates through all of the elements in our button list. For, int i equals 0, i button list dot length, i plus plus. In the for loop, for each element in the list and the parent game objects button component and disable the button by making it non-interactable. Button list i dot get component in parent, dot interactable equals false. Add a call to game over in the if in end turn. Game over. The final script look like this, save the script, return to unity. Enter play mode, enter play mode. Test by clicking the top row of this. When we click all three spaces in the top row, 
our code should detect a win. At this point, all of the rest of the buttons should be pulled. Currently, if we try to win by clicking any of the other rows, columns, or diagonals, the game will not detect a win, obviously, but we do know that our base code is working as expected and doing what we want to do. We now need to check the remaining rows, columns, and diagonals. Open the game controller script for editing. We already have code that checks the first row. To do so, the code checks the following elements. Button list 0, button list 1 and button list 2. We now need to check the rest of the possible combinations. First the remaining rows. Button list 3, button list 4 and button list 5. Button list 6, button list 7 and button list 8. Followed by the columns. Button list 0, button list 3 and button list 6. Button list 1, button list 4 and button list 7. Button list 2, button list 5 and button list 8. And lastly, the two diagonals. Button list 0, button list 4 and button list 8. Button list 2, button list 4 and button list 6. Duplicate the code checking the first row 7 times, so we have a total of 8 copies, one if statement for each column, row, and diagonal. If, button list 0 dot text equals equals player side and end button list 1 dot text equals equals player side and end button list 2 dot text equals equals player side. Game over. Change the index value, for each row, column, row, and diagonal so that each if statement checks a unique row, column, row or diagonal. Here is the line checking the second row. If, button list 3 dot text equals equals player side and end button list 4 dot text equals equals player side and end button list 5 dot text equals equals player side. Game over. Checking the third row. If, button list 6 dot text equals equals player side and end button list 7 dot text equals equals player side and end button list 8 dot text equals equals player side. Game over. Checking the first column. If, button list 0 dot text equals equals player side and end button list 3 dot text equals equals player side and end button list 6 dot text equals equals player side. Game over. Checking the second column. If, button list 1 dot text equals equals player side and end button list 4 dot text equals equals player side and end button list 7 dot text equals equals player side. Game over. Checking the third column. If, button list 2 dot text equals equals player side and end button list 5 dot text equals equals player side and end button list 8 dot text equals equals player side. Game over. Checking the first diagonal. If, button list 0 dot text equals equals player side and end button list 4 dot text equals equals player side and end button list 8 dot text equals equals player side. Game over. Checking the second diagonal. If, button list 2 dot text equals equals player side and end button list 4 dot text equals equals player side and end button list 6 dot text equals equals player side. Game over. Save the script. Return to Unity. Enter play mode. Test by clicking any of the spaces. Now, all possible winning conditions should work and when the winning conditions have been met, the board should be disabled. Next, we need to change sides when a turn is done and actually be able to play against another person. Currently we don't really have a game. We can check for win conditions and when we get 3 XS in a row, the game is over. We now need to be able to change sides. To change sides, we will need to check what side we are on and alternate the player values, swapping X for O or vice versa. To do this, open game controller script. Let's create a function that will change the player sides. Create a new function that returns void call change sides. Void change sides. In that function, we need to test our current side and swap the player's team. Add code to check the player side value and assign the other team's value to player side. Player side equals, player side equals equals x, question mark o semicolon x, note, capital letters for X and O. At the end of every turn we ninge sides, 
so let's put a call to change sides at the end of the end turn function. Add a call to change sides to the end of end turn. Change sides. The final script should look like th Save the script. Return to Unity. Enter, Enter play, play mode. mode. Test by clicking any of the spaces. Now, when we click on any space, the turns alternate between X and O, and if we get 3 XS or 3 OS in a row, we fulfill the win conditions and the game is our game is essentially done at this stage we can actually play tic-tac-toe the next step however is to polish the project into a proper game that people feel is finished and worth playing <laughs>